Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And with me tonight, we have Dirk Werning of YouTube and Instagram. Uh, Dirk has a channel that has just, uh, just started in the last year. He's got a lot of content going up. He just passed his uh, thousand sub uh, mark and uh, did an awesome giveaway. And he's just got a great channel. And uh, we all seem to love Dirk Werning. And it's uh, Alex, our good friend, Alex Tissot of Alex's Knife Box, introduced me to, to you, Dirk. Uh, so I want to welcome you to the show. Thanks for coming on, sir. Oh, your, your mic is me. There we go. No, thanks a lot for having me. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, Alex is a great guy. He kind of turned me on to you as well. Yeah, he what a collection that guy has, man. And great taste. And one thing I love about uh, about Alex's collection is that even his most pedestrian knife has mm -hmm. a personal tweak to it, you know. It doesn't matter what it is. He's got a uh, a great a great little take on it of his own. Anyway, Dirk, tell me about your channel. Uh, where do you come from? What's your uh, your love? of big knives. I know you have a love of big folding knives because that's one of the things that just uh, drew me in. A therapeutic edge. Nice to see you, sir. Yeah. Hi. I, uh, I'm here in Napa, California, about an hour outside of San Francisco and kind of been into the knife collecting uh, about three or four years now. Um, kind of got into Medford's, you know, like a lot of people, I watched a lot of Nick Chavez and a lot of Jim Skelton. So the big knife thing kind of was ingrained from, from Jim, I think. Got my first Medford on eBay and was kind of sucked in. And it kind of hey. snowballed from there. <laughs> yeah. You, well, it you know, when you start with big knives, you you see that big knives could be a very deep hole. And and we will oh, get to God, some yes. of your big knives in a little while because uh, we had a great, great suggestion for a topic of discussion. I'll bring it up now so people can start chiming in. Uh, but... Uh, longtime listener and uh, recent participant, Dave Everett, uh, our good friend up in Connecticut, uh, suggested we do a uh, 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 what is your most unusual knife or most unusual knife designs, and uh, we can show a few off. And uh, right before we started rolling, you showed me a few of yours, and uh, my jaw dropped. So I, I can't <laughs> wait to I can't wait to show those. But before we do, I I just want to get this out of the way. I want to say. Uh, you cannot have a love for big folders or big pocket knives here in the United States without having an appreciation for knife rights. Uh, so there, I just want to remind everyone they're in their big uh, fundraising season right now. They call it the ultimate steal. And uh, at various levels of giving, you you get uh, some sort of a thank you. I just got a thank you uh, in the in the form of a, a SOG Terminus uh, XR uh, with the little knife rights uh, label on there. And... Uh, just just remember they've they've done a lot of work so far uh 22 bills in 20 states uh over awesome. the last uh, 10 years and uh getting rid of these stupid stupid knife laws that come from west side story and mm -hmm. jim crow so so yeah, there awesome. you go there's the hard pitch but uh <laughs> dirk when did you start your channel so i started my channel in uh, mid-december of 19. so just you know five and a half months ago give or take uh, and yeah, you had mentioned we did uh, hit the thousand subscriber mark about a week and a half ago now. Uh, hit the fourteen fifty yesterday, and wow. did a did a big giveaway. Um, actually, gave did the drawing and stuff last night for a uh, Medford Genesis uh, Praetorian Genesis T <clears throat> that was so how did you donated come to the channel? <clears throat> Excuse me. So. All of a sudden, my, my good friend, uh, Jake, the Medford guy, who's a Medford dealer, I get a package from him, thought it was for my buddy, Nick, who lives in New Zealand. I've gotten a, several things here. And with the whole COVID thing, he's not having anything shipped to him in New Zealand. So he's been shipping them here. I'm going to put one big shipment together and ship it to him in the future here. So I thought it was something for him. I open it up to take a look, because if you send me something to ship you, I got to play with it before you get it. <laughs> yeah. It's just that that's the rules. So I open it up and there's a very nice note in there from Jake saying that, hey, an anonymous viewer wanted to donate this to you to give away at your thousand subscriber mark. Man. And I was really blown away because at that particular moment, I think I had 520 Agent. subs. And so I'm like, dude, this is going to be a while to give this away. I'm at 500. Um, 
I put it out there. I said, thanks, everybody. Made a quick video. Um, reached out to Metal Complex a few days later just because he had posted up that he wanted a Genesis to review. <laughs> so I sent him some heavy hitters. He's got a couple of more videos to put out. Um, and that was one of them. So he talked about it on a live stream. And I think in 72 hours, I went from 640 to almost 1,100 subscribers. Wow. Oh, man. So so quickly, Metal and I didn't even think it would be that fast. He had to quickly do the review of the giveaway knife so he could ship <laughs> that one back to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Keep the other ones, ship that one back to me so that I could do my giveaway video and get it out there. Uh, beautiful knife and and really cool uh, metal complex awesome guy great yep. channel and and uh, just a testament to a few things first of all you know it, the knife community which everyone lauds rightfully so it's awesome I've met some great people uh, present company included but also it goes to show uh, I think it was cutlery lover like a million years ago saying in one of his videos like some people you watch because you want to find out certain technical things or, mm -hmm. or you, you want a certain kind of review that's going to cover all the bases as if you're buying a car. Uh, right. <clears throat> and then there are some people you tune into because you like, and mm -hmm. you are definitely not a, uh, as, as uh, Ray over at EDCC would say, you're not a spec expert. You talk about your impressions of the knife, how the knife feels, how the knife works and how it makes you feel. And that's a different thing than uh, this is a four inch blade and uh, of, you know, seven ounces and that's all also important information but you seem to be one of those right. people tune into because they like you yeah i think so i mean i hope so i try to give the specs also i breeze through those really quick you know hey it's five inches long it's got a three inch blade blah 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 right. and then really kind of give an impression how it feels in the hand how the action is how the experience was buying it if i bought it new because there's a, that goes into it a lot too you I know mean, i have a lot of custom things and was it difficult dealing with the maker throughout the the designing and the building process or not and i think those are all important things when that i want to know when i'm going to make a custom purchase you also have a very particular taste and uh your your taste resonates with a lot of the stuff i like you you tend towards uh, the larger, um, you know, like the Medfords. Uh, that's mm -hmm. how I first got uh, into you because I was uh, about to buy my first Praetorian, my my one and only Praetorian. Okay. Uh, it's awesome. And I love it. But I watched every one of your videos about Praetorians and then got obsessed with the, uh, with a couple of the others. Uh, um, uh, chief among them. What's, what's the, what's the uh, Warren Cliff flipper? That thing is so cool. It's got a big fat blade. Flipper. Uh, anyway, my my point is yeah. your taste. You you have you have you have impeccable taste, and it's also particular taste, uh, not not mm -hmm. not necessarily on the gentlemanly side. Though I know you have an appreciation. For I, that. I've got some of those as well. I kind of run the gamut. Um, you know, I have some of the more affordable kind of every person carry type things, as well. But I do gravitate more towards the bigger overbuilt in your face why the hell would you buy that type of thing is, is more my my focus but i do have some of those you know more inexpensive kind of everyday type of knives hey mark so uh, what is it that got you into knives uh in the first place enough to start a channel well you know <clears throat> I really got into knives way back in like 87 when I bought my first Spyderco police model, nice. 87, 88. Carried that just every day. Didn't even know there was a, anything called EDC back at that time. <laughs> um, but just carried a knife at work, opened boxes, broke down cardboard, you know, just the normal everyday things. Um, and then I got a couple of different Spyderco models throughout the years, a couple of Benchmates throughout the years. And then it was, you know, maybe five years ago that I kind of started getting really into knives and collecting. Mm -hmm. And so I'd always post on Instagram and Facebook and that sort of stuff. And then a few buddies started saying, dude, you should do YouTube. I'm like, dude, nobody wants to listen to me ramble. You guys, <laughs> you guys barely want to listen to me ramble. So why would somebody willingly go? You guys are my friends and we're in the car together driving. So you got to listen. <laughs> so, um, I, I did toy with it. I told two other buddies about it that ha one who had a YouTube channel, Random Rob, he's a watch channel. Mm. And 
And yet, li I didn't listen to Nick Shabazz. I got into watches. Don't oh, do gosh. Yeah. He's always saying. Yeah. <laughs> just listen, listen to him. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, but I got into watches, started talking to a good friend, Rob, yes. and told him that, hey, I was thinking of maybe doing hey, Alex. YouTube. Alex! <laughs> um, and within about five minutes, he had sent me links to everything I needed to buy to do it. The tripod, the lights, the microphone, this, mm -hmm. that. And he goes, do it, do it, do it. So about a week later, I ordered the stuff and got it all in and put together a video and shit, a couple of people watched. So I started going nuts. <laughs> uh, here's, here's Edwin saying <laughs> he bought his epic Casio calculator watch because of you. So cool. Uh, well, that's, that's funny. great. It's funny, Edwin, I, I bought this Emerson S-O-C-F-K slash A <laughs> because of you. I, that The name still doesn't roll off the tongue, but I, I love that knife. Nope. Um, so you are mentioning that you, yeah, you're not just, well, you watch your channel. And like I said, what reeled me in and, and what keeps me coming back are some of the really incredible high end and, and um, kind of uh, less accessible knives uh, that you have in your collection. Um, I, I, I really dig. Uh, but you were saying, and, and I know recently you did a giveaway of the Asticus. I think maybe Alex sent it to you and then... Or, or, Something yeah. with the Civivi, right? Yeah. So I had a, I saw Alex. Alex had sent me some pictures of the Civivi Asticus with the Damascus blade and the right. G and the G10 slash carbon fiber scale. And so he sent me some pictures of it before his video came out because Alex and I kind of chat on the side and been longtime friends. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, that's really cool. And then he told me the price. I'm like, dude, I got to get one. Like I literally watched his video, mm -hmm. ordered it while I was watching the video. And he goes, dude, I was going to send you this one. <laughs> I'm like, well, yes. send it anyway. And we ended up doing a giveaway for like a 400 subscriber, kind of a random number, but tried, you know, try to build a channel. You do some, you know, kind of goofy things. Yeah. Why not? So I, I gave hey, that. Dave. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. And uh, so we gave away the Civivi Asticus and, and I still have one. And I, it's, it's a very cool knife. And for you know seventy nine dollars or whatever yeah. it is, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's I, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I have the like I said, I have the shredder, and something about it just doesn't doesn't resonate with me. Even though I like how thinly ground it is, and I like mm -hmm. all of its component parts. Um, but uh, uh, oh, so the reason I start talking to it is this uh, Dirk the knife stage name. <laughs> yeah, right, Dirk. <laughs> right, exactly. Naval, yeah. the Naval Dirk, um, the Benchmade. Does everyone know about this? Am I the last to hear this? Probably, because I'm the last to hear everything, including big news in my family, if anyone's watching from the family. Uh, however, Benchmade just came out with their automatic 940. Yep. Uh, if I had an applause soundtrack, I'd hit it. But to me, I'm like, finally, a 940 I'm excited about. That knife to me, and I know it's not a popular position, but... I never really got it about that knife. I think it's an awkward design. I've got uh, but, one here on the table, not the automatic, but mm -hmm. the carbon fiber one. It's a cool knife. I, I'm going to have to talk to my Benchmade dealer who kind of helps support the channel to see if I can get one of the automatics now. I, I, I got to say, like the automatic to me seems like the logical end point for this. It now seems like it is finally like because they they right. they throw G10 at it. Yeah, it's still a cool knife. They throw carbon fiber and S90V at it. OK, mm -hmm. that's great. But to me, this is this is it. This is the one. The, this is the 940 I want. Uh, yep. I have the uh, the arm, the AFO two. you know, that one. Oh, uh -huh. yep. Uh, what a great switchblade that is. Uh, yeah, I'm that's sorry. a good one, too. Um, I'm with you, Bob. I'm a huge fan of the 940. Well, well, actually, ODC for EDC is that I, I'm actually not a huge 940 fan, fan, but seeing it in this incarnation seems to make sense to me now. I agree. Whereas, and I used to have one, and and I, I, I carried it. You prefer the Contigo? Yes, I agree. And and also, uh, in terms of looks, and I am a shallow guy. Uh, the one in the middle is always my favorite. Not not the Contigo and not the 940, but what was that one in the middle? Hey, Andrew, good to see you, sir. 
So glad to catch this live. It's been a while. Oh, well, good Welcome, to have Andrew. you. Good to have you. It's great to have you. So, Dirk, do you have any uh, switchblades? Do you have any automatics? I know I California. Do. I, ha I have a, you know, yeah, I live in California, but it's weird. You're allowed to own them, but not carry them or some stupid thing. Um, but yeah, I do have a, I do have a couple of uh, automatics. And I think generally speaking, if you're not a dumbass, you can carry them around and not have a problem. I've, exactly. carried them, I've been pulled over. I've gotten a speeding ticket. I've been questioned by the cops and it's never come up. So it's all about attitude. It, so. it, I'm always hearing that it's a secondary thing. You know, yep. the, the, the knife thing is always when you're already being a jerk or you're already uh, maybe yep. not being savvy with the law. Exactly. And, and then they tack that on. But it and is then, a stupid law. So we'll just get that out of the way right now. And, uh, you know, I, it's just dumb. And what about the size thing? Uh, two inches in California? So in California, you are allowed to have an under two inch automatic knife. So under. it's not two inches. They they word it as it needs to be under two inches. So I have a, right now, a Microtech UTX 70, which is there out the front, California legal. It was loaned into the channel. And um, it's pretty cool, but it's a one point eight eight inch blade kind of a cool little toy if you will i mean i guess you right. could put it in your laptop bag and be okay you know it's cool but yeah you're not gonna rush out and buy one yeah it's like the uh great to see you jared your your two sun yep. knives are on the way uh jared and kara loaned me uh um four Tucson knives for two weeks. I don't know if you've ever experienced uh, Tucson knives. Dirk. I have I have not experienced them, um, but looking forward to, and maybe I'll get those from Jared because I've got some stuff going his direction. Nice. Uh, basically the, basically, uh, and yeah, you know, whatever. If I'm not supposed to say, I'm not supposed to say Jared, but the, uh, <laughs> the ones that Metal Complex have has are gonna go straight from Metal Complex over to Jared to uh, review as well. I think it's cool how we can share some knives and I can do a review, Alex can do a review because him and I have swapped several times. Um, Metal can do a review, Jared and them can do a review and everybody gets a different perspective on the same knife. I think it's really cool. It to is. Other, I like to watch Alex do videos on my knives because he picks up stuff that I didn't notice. Yeah. Or that I didn't care about until he said it. And I'm like, dude, you're right. Well, you know how you have you know how you have different friends and different family that you go to for different kinds of advice, you know. Exactly. You might go to an older brother for a girl advice or whatever. Well, it's the same thing, you know, you got you got your knife yep. friends. Yeah. Totally yeah, agree. Well, I, I like it. You know, I, I was always uh <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm a I'm a Gen Xer nearing 50. And mm -hmm. uh, I've always been kind of eh, suspect of, of uh, social media. And I, I always kind of thought a little bit like, oh, really? A real friend online? You know, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have learned through this and through talking to people <laughs> about knives that, yeah, it is possible. I have a friend out in California named Alex. Yeah, man, I've never shook his hand, but... Mm -hmm. You know, we we uh, we we share something. You know, some and I of love the guys, that. Yeah, some of the guys I talk to the most, even before the lockdown, the co, you know, all that. But some of the people I talk to the most, I've never met, except yeah. online. We just, you know, I talk to Alex, you know, every day, <laughs> and several other guys online that I've met through the knife community, through the jeeps before that, and watch community, and have built really good you know, really close knit friendships with these guys that we message back and forth. And maybe we've talked on the phone once, maybe, maybe we've gotten on a zoom call or something once, but yeah, some of my best friends. So, uh, it's fun. Hey, Slicey. Good to have you, sir. So how do how do the, uh, enthusiast, uh, different enthusiast communities compare? Hey, Justin, uh, knife audio look like a, <laughs> like the mediator that just came out. Yeah, but but it looks exactly like a 940. Just, it does. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, what was I saying? The other enthusiast groups, like the, oh, watch, yes. like the watch community, is a great group of people also very much like the knife community. Okay. I can't say that 
the knife community is better than the Jeep community or the Bronco guys or the watch guys. Um, I was reluctantly drug into the watch thing. I, okay, Michael didn't have to try too hard, but sucked me in over there. And it's been, again, a great group of guys that I've known since July. And they're sending me stuff to check out and I'll send it back. I like it. It kind of blows you away when you think about it, that people are shipping you stuff. Yeah. That they've never met you, never really talked to you, sent an email and said, Hey, do you want to check out this $500 thing? I'll sit, yeah. I'll ship it to you. No problem. The, the thing though is, is putting a $500 Medford in the mail and sending it uh, is, is one thing, but putting like a delicate watch or, you know, something like a watch that has all those guts that can be totally mangled. Uh, you just got to pack them right. I mean, I do. So on my channel, I also review a few watches every mm -hmm. now and then because well, it's what I'm into. It's my yeah. channel, so I'll do what I want. <laughs> God um, damn it. <laughs> and, you know, they don't get a lot of views. It's usually my small group of night watch guys watch them, and that's fine. But we have some tour tour watches where, you know, one of the one, random Rob will buy it or get it from the manufacturer, and then it'll go around to like 13, 12 or 13 people. We'll all have it for a week wow. or a few days. We ship it off to the next person, and it's free. And or maybe you bought into it because you wanted to check it out, so you bought in twenty dollars. Hmm. It's in twenty bucks. It ships around, and at the end, we do a drawing, and somebody wins it. That's so cool. That's so, that sounds very much like it, the knife. It, yeah, it's cool to be able to check out these other watches. Some I've gotten in, and I'm like, yeah, that's it's cool. I do a quick video, and off it goes because it's not for me. Right. But some of them are like, dude, do I have to ship it to the next guy? <laughs> hey, Jim, can you put up Alex's last comment? And then I want to ask Justin something too. Uh, You're so right, Alex. Alex. Oh. You're so right. I've been there and done that in the past. God, <laughs> dude. Oh. So wow. you're not you're you're not getting the same level of generosity and genuine authenticity. No. No. Thing? There, there's no, there's very little genuine authenticity in online dating. Well, I guess it turns out some human activities should, you know, uh, should not be online. Yeah. <laughs> you like probably all of them. Uh, but also, uh, Justin, uh, Justin said, uh, commented on the 940 uh, looking like the mediator. And, and actually, I remember when the mediator came out, A, Justin, do you have one? And B, how do you like it uh, if you do? But I, I actually remember that discussion, especially because it's a reverse tanto, which is a term I take exception to. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a very inaccurate I think it's a sloppy term, reverse tanto. No, it's not that. It's uh, just because the t it's like an extreme clip point, really. If you want to get yes, I agree about it. Uh, but right there. but uh, how you know? Does anyone know about the mediator? And then and then why would they put that out uh, as you know directly before putting out the nine forty? An interesting, an interesting thing to consider if you can't fall asleep tonight. So exactly. There you go. Uh, so, uh, another knife I wanted to mention is a new, uh, uh, real steel. It's a fixed blade by O stop hell. And, uh, again, it just, it just looks cool. I, we had O stop hell on the show and, um, I, I like his design philosophy. I, I, I've mentioned this before. I'm kind of rooting for the Polish. I keep finding myself, uh, really digging their knives and, uh, I'm sorry. Did I say real steel? I, I meant best tech. Um, yeah, real steel is a uh, 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 another one that he designs for, but uh, it's a beautiful sort of fixed blade. It, could, it it's kind of an all around uh, uh, what do you call it uh, utility knife. Mm -hmm. Though I think they're marketing it to flex into outdoors and to you know from the picture tactical because I see black gloves and some rope. Right. Um, but but to me, it just looks like a great everyday fixed blade or camp knife. And then you look at it, and it has that sort of signature Ostop Hell handle design. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what do you think of this thing? Do you like fixed blades? You know, I've got a few. Um, not generally a huge fixed blade guy, but I do like a few. Um, and that one looks really good. I kind of like the orange handle with the black. Just something about orange kind of gets me going. Mm -hmm. So I do like the the whole shape and look of that one. Uh, it's G10. It's uh, it's got a it's almost four inch. I guess it's three and three quarters inch blade. Yeah, yeah. The only thing 
uh, okay, if we're going to start picking nits, which I guess I'm going to, uh, with a with small fixed blades, it's just my own uh, little taste. Small fixed blades, I like the handle and the blade to be at least the same length. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. um, because I find the sheathing of it awkward when there's more handle than blade. Agreed. Um, so uh, you know, maybe I would take this uh, with with one more inch on that beautifully shaped D2 drop point uh, blade. But uh, really, a, a beautiful overall design, I think. Yeah, I agree with you there. <clears> oh, <throat> uh, thank you, Alex. Yeah, oh, stop! What a cool guy. You know, uh, uh, so one of the one of the silver linings of of pandemic land has been uh, being able to talk to people. I've I talked to Tashi Barucha and mm -hmm. Ostop Hill in the last couple of weeks, just because it kind of worked out time wise because we were both teleworking or whatever, and. Uh, um, so it was great to talk to to Ostop and his his wife was in the hospital having a baby and <laughs> that all came out like after we were done with the interview and I'm like really like like <laughs> that is all I would be talking about I'd, I'd be dropping that every opportunity I had but right but uh, I think the Polish designers have some really uh, oh I think they have some really good knife makers and and uh, a growing aesthetic kind of like uh, you can kind of tell a Russian knife just from looking at it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you feel that way, but uh, no, I don't have one, Bob. I was wondering the same thing. Yeah, well, who knows? You know, they they come and go, Benchmade, with their models. So uh, who knows? Maybe the mediator is a stopgap. Uh, tier one, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Assuming you're a sir. I haven't met you, but I think pretty much all of you are sirs almost. Uh, Bad Monkey EDC, what's everyone drinking? I have some Templeton rye. Well, I have water tonight. Yeah, I've got sparkling water. So and, and coffee. I, I had to give myself a talking to after this last weekend. Um, so water tonight. Oh <laughs> boy, still recovering from the Memorial Weekend, right? Well, it's not. It's not even so much recovery. It's kind of like I just, uh, you know, just kind of feel like I drank all day and didn't even get drunk. So what the hell is the point? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And then it was like, oh, I I noticed the handle in the garbage I'm like well that's what happened that's a, that will explain it yeah yeah well um i got a quick question for you before we move on to new knives uh in our collections and such like that something mm -hmm. i like to call the state of the collection but have you seen the new spider co canis it came out in the last drop or the last release you know i guess it was number five and there have been a number of videos out there have you seen it i've seen a couple um it actually looks really cool it, it, I I may have to break down and get my hands on that. Talk to my spider co dealer and see if he can get me one because I think it looks really cool. I like that kind of uh, whatever that that bevel kind of in the center between the hole and the mm -hmm. tip. I kind of like that relief there. Uh, it yeah. just looks cool. I'm about the aesthetics as much as the function, right? I mean, it doesn't look if it looks stupid, even though it functions great. I'm not gonna have one. Sorry. I'm with you on that. I, I am with you on that. And and with spider coes, you it's also an unpopular position, but you're always dangerously close to looking stupid. And yes. and and uh you, you know they're they're like the goofy knife you can love. Uh, a lot of them look kind of goofy, but I love them, you know. What's not exactly. to love about a spider? But look at that thing. I mean, to me, that is uh that is aggressive and unusual looking. That's something mm -hmm. we'll talk about with Dave when we bring him on later, uh, for some unusual knives. Uh but the uh I don't know if you call that a swedge. What do you call that cutout? I, uh, I'm not yeah. sure either. That's why I kind of yeah. like was searching for the word. So yeah, it's you know, a relief there. It's a let's let's just agree to call that a swedge, huh? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I, mean, I, I I like it too, and then I like how it fattens out towards the tip, because yes. I'm a terrible Warncliffe breaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So is this uh, the kind of thing you could see yourself going for? Yeah, I could definitely get one of these. And, and you know, a lot of the time it's just get something to get something. Am I going to carry it and use it and do stuff with it? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You know, honestly, I work from home, so I don't go out much. Right. So I don't have the opportunity, but I always carry something when I do leave. And it just, it's what's on the table, what's on the dresser. Like, it's kind of what's your mood. That's the hardest part of the day, is getting dressed and figuring out what watch you're going to take with what knife to match your goofy socks? <laughs> well, so 
so the question is when you're getting ready to go out when that actually does happen and you're grab and you're taking a knife is it about i might have to defend myself today or is it uh i really want to pull this out and appreciate it at some point today or is it i've got work coming so i mean like what is it then you know because i do have such a varied collection i have some really nice dressy stuff that i wouldn't want to get all beat up and scratched up yeah. Um, and then I've got some beater ones that are still kind of on that overbuilt size. Like kind of one. But it's where am I going and what am I going to take that I'm not going to be afraid to actually use should I need to use it. <laughs> I I agree with Therapeutic Edge. Style yep. over substance is... <laughs> Style I mean, because we are talking about luxury items here. I, I am... I am not a hard worker with... Yes, it is a switch. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, Thanks for that's a rest. Um, but I, you know... I think that's exactly right. Slicey, I thought the Canis looked terrible in photos, but looks great in videos. Interesting. Yeah, especially when you see it uh, operate under the um, under the compression lock, when you see it kind of fall. Mm -hmm. oh, it is a hollow grind. Oh, to nice. me, in all the pictures, it looks like a, uh, a Scandi grind with a, with a secondary edge. Mm-hmm. But uh, a therapeutic edge was saying style over substance, and, and, and I... I, my former self, my art school self would bristle at my saying uh, uh, that that's true. But but in this sort of luxury good thing, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, and we're going to start uh, carried my first cousin, Kevin Foster Narwhal today. Love it. Hello, Dave. And thank you for joining us. Cute little baby. I don't know what a Kevin Foster Narwhal, Narwhal is. I'm at a loss myself. So. This sounds like something that might be up your alley, sir. Hey, I bought a non-Emerson, a Benchmade Tengu flipper. Oh, that's the little gentleman's knife, right? I think it's that, uh, Dirk, do you know? I'm not, I'm not certain on which model that one is. Tengu. That's the problem with Benchmade, man. They've got way too many. I can't keep track of them all. I got, I got to find out what this narwhal is. And yeah, it is definitely style. Um, it's pocket jewelry, guys. Yeah. It's, you know, if you need a utility knife or just a knife in your pocket, get a buck 110 or something along those lines and off you go. Nothing wrong with that. But Agreed. if you want to have something cool, then you get something a little flashy. So, okay. Oh, congrats on the granddaughter there, Dave. Oh, that's a granddaughter. Oh, congratulations. New granddaughter. Well, well small. I might break it if they're. <laughs> That's no, cool. they're they're cool. resilient and supple and and uh, <laughs> and awesome. Uh, this is even jewel. Okay, so this is a um, a knife I just got used off of uh, Blade Forums. It's a uh, an old uh, uh, special operation command folder folding knife model A. That's the drop point from Emerson okay. Emerson nice. Sucker right here, and uh, this is a 2005, and it came nicely. Like it's very sharp, and it's been. Loving learn and loved and used and yeah, that's awesome. lovingly used and that's and the great. funny thing is is that you know i don't i don't i don't use my knives hard enough or or have many of them long enough or or carry them enough to get that sort of honest wear in mm -hmm. and something will not allow me to take sandpaper to a knife to make it look old. No. it's like ripping your jeans you know yeah yeah you can't purposely rip your jeans you can't purposely you know sand your knife no it's got to be natural or, or it's or you're just fake Right. So even so, even so, even though I bought it already worn in, even though I went to the secondhand store and bought the worn in leather motorcycle jacket, uh, it, it still is pocket jewelry. It doesn't matter that it it's not uh, it, that it's not this fancy, fancy pants thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that name rolls off the tongue. <laughs> suck for mm, a suck for a. I treated myself. Oh, yes. So Alex oh. has been uh, teasing this amazing ZT777, oh yes. and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, against against my uh, <laughs> against my better or against my taste, like it's got a carbon fiber handle, which I'm generally not that into. That is gorgeous, and then it's got this absolutely. crazy combo blade. Uh, the blade thank you, is incredible thank you, Edwin. On that triple seven, Alex. Oh my god, oh my god. I, that's yeah. That's a beautiful one, Alex. Great job. Yeah, yeah. The pattern in that dark steel along the top. Yes. So cool. Crazy. So so that's that's kind of what I was saying about Alex. He didn't just get a 777. He got the 777. Correct. 
<laughs> that's one of the nicest Emerson designs I have in the Tanto blade. Yes, okay. Anthony, good to see you, sir. I would love to get this in the Tanto. Uh, uh, I saw Edwin's video of it, and and that's what really uh, set my alarm bells off when I saw this for a very reasonable price from a gentleman on on Blade Forums. I had to jump in. Uh, so, well, now that you've seen it, that's what I have new. Dirk, what do you have new? Uh, I think the newest thing I have is the uh, Red Horse Knifeworks oh, that's cool. Hellraiser P series. So it's a production made, but and it you know I saw again Jim got me uh, mm -hmm. Jim Skelton video. I actually ordered this while I was watching his video, um, but it was two hundred and fifteen dollars. And where is that made? Is do they make it themselves? Is nobody says it's got to be made offshore. It, okay. it has to be, but nobody really is claiming responsibility. And they're not telling. Know, and they're not saying. So that's one of my newest ones. And then my other newest one is a uh, TJ mm. Fisher Cobra, four inch. God, so that is this kind of production. One he made ten of these. Some were green and some were uh, coyote tan. And I had one of the prototypes in that a buddy had lent me um, to do reviews on. And so I had called up TJ and talked to him about getting some details yeah. before I did the video. And he told me all about the production one that was launching within a few days. So I said, well, hey, you know, give me the details and I can talk about it on the video and I'll hold the video until you want me to. And so we, we talked about it, came up with the price, 950. He came up with a deposit amount, I think with 400. And so I put it out on the on the video and everything and he got a, several sales. And before we got off the phone, he's like, you know, I've got one that's almost done if you want it. And I'm like, uh, sure, I'll take it. I'll send you money <laughs> this afternoon. And I had mine in about two weeks um, and the rest of them are still kind of being finished up right now and being shipped out. So you call this production and it's a run of 10? Yeah, he calls it product. Like we don't know what right. to call it. I'm like, dude, it's it's a custom. Hold You're that up again. My hand. Yeah, yeah. And if you make ten of them, I don't think that's production. I, I think I you've think made that's ten production. And so <laughs> TJ's opinion is, and and so that's Todd Junior. Um, goodness. his opinion is to be a custom knife, you have to have a customer before you make it. Oh, and he was making ten to then sell. I said, dude. Like you're gonna pre-order them. So the customer is going to order it before you make it. Therefore, it's a custom. He doesn't, he, but, him and I don't agree on that one exactly. I, I One point I could see is that like making it to the specs of the customer, then, then I could see you being a purist about it. But to me, it just seems like he made 10 perfectly awesome, incredible knives. Exactly. I don't have anything I won't use, but I have a few I'd rather not use. Huh, that's I'm, interesting. I'm totally in that in that realm, Slicey. Um, there's some that are one-off customs that I would prefer not to use, but when I carry them, if a cutting task comes up, I will pull it out and use it, and I have. Um, but typically, when I carry those knives, I'm not going out camping and into the woods. I'm going out to a fancy dinner where. Yeah likely nothing major is going to come up and need to be cut. So I pick what I'm going to carry based on where I'm going, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and your definition of use is also like an important thing. Like for me, use is is, is never hard. And if it is hard yeah. and I had one of my awesome knives on me, I'd be like, yeah, finally, I get to put this thing, you know, I get to cut a tire yeah. or whatever it is, but it never happens. And I'm pretty um, good with, you know, my custom makers and stuff. I'm, I'm friends with them. I talk to them. If I were to break something, it's the price I pay. I would call them up, ship it back, and say, I, I know you don't make these anymore, but I need a new blade. What can you do? And 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 deal with it. You know, so I'm not scared to use anything, but like Slicey said, I would prefer not to use certain ones. Right. Right. And they're like none of them, none of them are so uh, precious that they can't be touched you know no um, they are they well, are after all name. knives it's not like you're having someone make you f like delicate china cups or something you're having them make you a knife yep. so 
and they're made to be used. And, and when you talk to the makers, depending on which ones you talk to, most of them are, they want them to be used. They want to get them back in a year or two or three when it has an issue maybe and see it all scratched up and then they'll tune it up and tweak it for you. But they yeah. want it to come back in four years looking the like it did the day it yeah. went Give it the spa treatment. It's like there's nothing to spa there's off of it. Yeah. You, it's you, a dust. You used it's it. just one of those air blasters. Exactly. So, so I want to move on to a topic yep. because this is kind of uh, uh, in, in keeping with what we're talking about. Our, our good friend Dave Everett, who's going to join us in a minute, uh, suggested we talk about some of our most unusual knives. And and uh, he suggested that to me today. And I thought, oh, my God, that is perfect considering who I will be having on tonight. Uh, and uh, you have some damn unusual knives uh, uh, before. Uh, let's let's see. Let's let's see. You we've already seen one of them. So why don't you just break the ice with that one? And then let's bring Dave on. So the most unusual knife I have is also one of the heaviest knives I have. And that would be the Phil Harvey Peacemaker. <laughs> see if I can get it in the camera here. It, it, it kind of covers my whole head. So I got to kind of lean around here to see. God, that is glorious. Um, it's about a five and a half inch blade. It's got a few fingerprints on there. Sorry. Uh, the pocket clip, I think, is about five inches. Oh, my God. And uh, we'll give you another shot of the show side. If I can get it in view here. And then we'll turn it on the edge so you can see that it's a little thick. <laughs> so this is three eighths inch blade oh my God. and this weighs in at about just over two pounds i don't remember the exact weight but it's <laughs> oh about my two pounds God. Um, Let me, let's see the clip side again real quick because i think it's hilarious and awesome that that giant long gargantuan clip has a little divot cut out for, so for you to line it up here. Here is a just a car a Kara pen, which is your standard length pen. Yeah, the clip is about you know about the size of a standard pen. Jeez. Now it does fit in your pocket, unless you're wearing skinny jeans. It will fit in your jeans pocket, and you can sit down with it, but you're you're not going to carry this around. Okay, guys, <laughs> you're not. Dave says, wow, that lays waste to the proponent. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. So, so tell me exactly, um, if you can, explain your thought process in buying that. Uh, and I'm sure there was an awful lot of impulse and just an awful lot of, uh, uh, what do they call it? Reptile brain or whatever lizard brain involved. But I saw, I had a good friend, Valentino, and, and you guys have probably seen him on Instagram or whatever, and he had one, and I was been talking to him on and off for years, and I finally reached out to Phil and uh, in the UK, Phil Harvey, and said, hey, are you making them? He goes, ah, I make them every once in a while. And, you know, next time I make one, I'll, I'll hit you. I'm like, okay, because I had gotten from another good buddy, his smaller version, the Gladius. And once I got the Gladius, I really needed to have the Peacemaker to match. And yeah, I mean, this is, this is like the junior, the baby yeah. brother. And so Phil hooked me up, and I just couldn't say no. It was just, it, it's it's so ridiculous and audacious that I had to have it. I audacious it. is the perfect word. Can you uh, can you show us the uh, the the uh, backspacer to this to the Gladius? It looks like bones, maybe, or it's it's oh. it's just kind of you know sculpted out. Yeah, that is gorgeous. It actually it looks a little painful, but really in the hand, it the backspacer doesn't bother you much at all. It really does feel comfortable in the hand. So just so just off the top of my head, to me, that's probably a knife I would carry. Every once in a while, this one <laughs> I have. I got here. Those are gorgeous. What's yeah? You carry that one with some. This one I will carry, and this one is roughly a four and a half inch blade. 
four and a half. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that's like the perfect, that's an ideal size. Beautiful knife. Do you have a, a couple of other uh, crazy ones? Uh, before we, it looks like an alien finger. Interesting. Well, here is a, a the, really custom Medford. Oh. Marauder. Ah. Uh, with a crazy Vulcan blade if it'll focus. And a sculpted handle. It's not really an unusual design, per se. It doesn't really fit that category. But yeah. it's very unusual for what they you know do this one's made back in like 2015 i think That's and it's kind of got kind of jumping all the way around or sculpting all the way around the uh perimeters of the blade and the scales just so much handwork going yep. into that hey hey uh, jim let's bring dave in i want to see uh this is the the gentleman who suggested the topic dave good to see you sir dave dirk Welcome. dirk dave hey dirk thank you sir how are you Good, good. I, I can go home now. Uh, you showed me all the uh, unusual knives. I don't have anything to compete. Well, uh, come are, on, man. What do you got? Those are unusual in size, but but there are some unusual designs out there. Let's there see what you got. There are more unusual designs. So let's see. Lay it on us. There we go. Whoa! Fast as dust. That? Oh, oh, that is sweet. That's crazy. So this is a um, Max Venom. Okay, I knew it. Well, uh, I was I was hiding the large nameplate, and this one's been refinished into kind of a steampunk. Okay, I picked it up from a guy on eBay. It's a plunge lock. Plunge lock. Uh, is that okay. like a button lock? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Wow, that's super smart. And, uh, of course, it's got a can opener. Uh, a, bottle a bottle opener, opener. yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Max Venom uh, uh, has made a, uh, I'm not sure what the guy's name is, but he goes by Max Venom, and he's designed a number of karambits and, and uh, self defense kind of things. I think Tops yeah, might make one of his knives. Yeah. And, yeah, that big, giant karambit. So what else you got, Dave? This one's, been out, this one's been out of production for a few years. Apparently, there's a waiting list. Mm. The um, the next up that I got recently is this guy. Oh wait 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 that is the Abanico uh, or no another another Tagalog name. Okay, I, I can't remember what it is. What is that? This is uh, the um, sir. Yeah. boy. I'm losing it now. It, it's another Kali technique name, right? Yeah, it's the. Um, Wow. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, made by Fox Knives. Okay. And um, the guy that was the uh, designer, it's the uh, Bonte. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bonte. Bonte means uh, to protect, protector. Okay. And uh, this guy is a Slovenian Army um, tactical instructor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love I love a recurve blade. I so do I. It, it and... just so happened that the uh, the holes matched up for a Benchmade deep carry, so I put that on myself. Oh, nice. sweet! But no. beautiful blade. I love so that. Good job. So, Dave, Very that in the hand that yep. has a that has a feature that I really really like in a knife, especially a tactical knife, which is the uh, the forward uh, thumb ramp. That's not not uh, not for the push. But for the pull, see what I mean? Uh, I really like that. You get that on a on a um, SOCOM, you know, a, a, mm -hmm. a, some other knives. But that is and beautiful. Box lock on it too. And yeah. I also, I also like where they put the glass breaker on the front instead of on the back. Yep, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's so on it's on washers, so it's not exactly drop shutty, that's okay. but it, um, it makes a nice impact. Uh, yep device as well beautiful i like so, that one that one's very cool so this this one is uh, one of my unusual ones uh besides besides some more pedestrian unusual uh but this one is a uh, greg lightfoot okay uh, element and it's my it's one of two custom knives that i own the other one is a is a fixed blade 
And uh, ah, this lighting is terrible. Sorry, I shouldn't have done no, that. I, but, uh, I like that one too. But it's uh, it's he he takes a lot of his design cues from sharks and uh, those kind of natural aquatic forms. Okay. And uh, he he uh, I I wanted a knife, but I and and I he makes spectacularly beautiful knives. But I'm not so into the heavily patterned materials. Um, and so I asked him if you would do kind of something tactical and, and he made this for me. And awesome. I asked specifically for the recurve sort of Tanto mm -hmm. thing to me. I love, uh, I love a recurve also. I don't see why people get all freaked out about recurves. You can't sharpen them that easily on flat bench stones, but you know, there are plenty of other, uh, plenty of other <laughs> things. All you guys are getting me all excited with these unusual knives. Hey, hey Bob, go yeah. watch the channel. So Alex, you'll see all the unusual ones you want. Yeah. I picked up a, a recurve uh, sharpening attachment for my KME. Oh, really? Is it uh, is it is it cylindrical in cross section? It it has three sides that are rounded, if you can picture that. Yeah. And it's okay. uh, three grits of diamond, up to uh, eighteen hundred. And uh, it'll I, in fact, I sharpened the um, the Bante. The only mm, way I can with do it. that. See, the sharpening thing isn't a problem for me because I don't sharpen. I send it to a buddy, and if I send him a recurve, he just has to deal with it, and then he sends it back to me sharp. So <laughs> that the sharpening of a recurve, like my dire wear here, it, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't dire. bother me. It's yeah. it's not my problem. But sorry, Bob, it's carbon fiber. I know you don't like carbon uh, fiber. I but. think I can make an exception in this. Okay, so so dire wear. Uh, so can you hold that knife up, please? Uh, uh, what what is that? What is that model? This is a solo V5. Okay. Five. To me, like these, that knife is like one of one of the one of the most desirable custom knives to me. That that basically that knife you have in your hand. Yeah, um, and it's on bearings, and it's just super, yeah. super also, smooth. Fires every. Time. What I love about this is your hand just locks in. It just uh -huh. feels so natural to just grab it and you're golden i don't know yeah. just this feels one of the best feeling knives i have in my hand you just grab it and you know you're locked in hey jim put up big boar's uh last comment i think he had a uh suggestion for three leaf clover style rod for recurves i think that's kind of what you were uh talking about dave um so so uh uh dirk is it are you concerned about messing up knives or you just have no interest in sharpening you don't find a, a zen calm in it to just... you know i have i i i sharpened some stuff as a boy scout mm -hmm. way back and it didn't turn out so well <laughs> okay. and so i have but you've grown like sir ptsd and maybe some flashbacks of this buck 110 that turned into you know, I don't know what it turned into. Other knife. And it, and it other knife. And so I've just never gotten into it. I never really took anything apart either until I started YouTube. And so people were like, dude, take something apart. We want to see the inside. So I'm like, all right, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, I, took, right. I take some stuff apart now. I don't take everything apart, but I've taken apart several different models and really? cleaned them, showed them off and all that. And people love those videos. It, it's amazing. It's fun to watch people struggle. You know, let me just do this while I roll the camera. <laughs> no, yeah, I, it's, I don't know if they turn out the best. For, people seem to watch them, but I like really, guys. Well, like, you know I why they watch the camera them? Camera, and I think they're waiting for me to screw it all up and say, "No, no, I no, no, no." I think they like your banter while you're doing it. You know, yeah, because but sometimes I stop the banter because I'm focused. Like that's my trouble. I get focused on getting this thing because it's not going back together right, and then I just am quiet and I'm like. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh crap! I'm, I'm talking to people. Oh, this is about, I'm entertaining right now." <laughs> exactly. Dave, Dave do you disassemble? Guys, do you disassemble? Oh yeah, that's a weird one. What the Let's hell see. is that? Spider Co. Pakal. Yeah. 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 It's designed to be held this way. With the yeah. Okay. That's like the uh, a lot like the Elvia. The uh, uh, Emerson's coming out with their version of it, but the uh, uh, on Friday actually, that's a beaut. And is and that I, little 
Prong, you know, similar to the wave feature of an Emerson? I mean, is that yeah, the design this, of it? This, uh, this was Spyderco's first venture into the wave, okay. which is to just drive a little rod down into the back of the blade. Okay. Is that removable? Um, not natively. You could probably <laughs> get it out of there. <laughs> probably it's some ice cream to yank it out, but yeah. Interesting. I'm not a huge wave fan, honestly. That's one. No. Of oh, let's see that. Oh, okay. Let's oh, let's see that. So speaking of real steel, okay. this is the uh, Epon from ah. Flipper. Ooh, that's nice. That's a uh, that's the kind you keep up the sleeve of your kimono in case uh, samurai right. is getting fresh. Well, <laughs> check out the spine. Oh, I like that. A that's pretty cool. Mini posts. Yeah. That's you said neat. that's real steel, huh? Real steel, so, Epon. So, so okay. <laughs> the guest says, I'm going to stop saying I have a collection. I own knives. Dirk has a collection. Oh, that's interesting. That's right. Dirk is like a, a curator. I'm not even, if you I'm not even sure I've pulled out the good stuff, but okay. <laughs> Dirk, the, those larger blades look made uh, Medfords look like miniatures. Yeah, they did. Little, oh, little. yeah. I mean, I've got a... Hey, what's up? So we have Spirited Whiskey here. How you doing, sir? What's happening? How's Happy man. United Knives. It's good to have you. Good to see you. For sure. I just wanted to pop in and say that I've been enjoying the chat. I was a little late, but I got a couple of uh, basically one of the most epic mail calls of my knife collecting career. Oh, right. oh that's... That's saying right, a lot well, for you, sir. What do you got? I will share a couple quick uh, quick ones if Do you got it. Yeah. And then I won't take much time. Oh, please. Let's see it. Oh, Peter Resenti. So this is the new uh, CKF Satori 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a collab between CKF and Peter Resenti. And it's a small Satori, so it's about a three... I mean, the action's ridiculous, whether you're flippering or you can use the fuller oh, as well on this thing. But the blade shape is just mean between the recurve and the Tonto. It's an M390. It. And uh, it's about a 3.35 inch blade on this one. Right. So, um, so small. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's really not too big, um, not too small. The clip, I think, is better than they've ever done on a CKF. Okay. Um, so it's easy in and out of the pocket, and uh, I think they nailed this one. It's a home run for sure. God, the awesome. blade is absolutely beautiful. Like you said, between the recurve, the tantoness, and the crazy tanto tip, and that fuller, it's gorgeous. Now, what is that? So this is – I have been searching forever to find the right Jonas Iglesias okay. um, custom. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? My headphones fell off right when you said that. Jonas, Jonas Iglesias is his name. And um, he is just, he's a younger maker who is, in my opinion, blowing everybody out of the water. And the secondary kind of proved it. But um, the hand rub as an acid drip hand rub that he does on it. Wow. Um, the thumb studs, dual thumb studs are both zirconium. The pivot is zirc. The pocket clip is also zirconium. And he does this beautiful texturing on the titanium. I don't know if you can capture that or not. And then this is a beautiful piece of cross-cut Westinghouse vintage micarta butterscotch Westinghouse. And then he does a free-floating zirconium backspacer. Oh, I love that. So that... Yeah. It's beautiful. The action that's is beautiful. beautiful. Deployment's incredible on it. So that's uh, that's an epic one. And then <laughs> one more. I think that wasn't enough. But wait, there's more. Uh, an another Mayo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this one is a Tom Mayo covert. This is a medium covert. Okay. So size-wise, this is three and a quarter inch blade. So it's a and it's a three and a quarter inch blade and weighs about 2.6, 2.7 ounces. Mm -hmm. So it's really lightweight. The blade, if you can see, is in 6K Stellite. Mm. What what is that? 
Um, it's not a steel at all. It's a tungsten, chromium, and cobalt alloy. Oh, um, so it is impervious to corrosion. Um, so between the titanium hardware, the titanium scales, it riding on Teflon washers, and being mm. a six case stellite blade, you could go swimming in the ocean and live as a fisherman or whatever right. with this thing, and uh, it's imper impervious to the elements. But I mean, his work, like, look at his, I mean, just how even his yeah. grinds are and his edges. And I mean, it's just, until you handle one, you'll never, I don't think, fully be able to grasp how perfect his work is. It's so simple, but it's so perfect. I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. I, I believe it. And, and he's also, uh, he's in Hawaii. So all of that yeah. makes sense. I mean, for the for the alloy, the crazy alloy. What'd you call it? It's called six K Stellite. So it's real stellite. weird stuff because six hey, K women carry knives is like forty. I, I, I should say forty nine to fifty one in Rockwell. So it's very low on the Rockwell scale. Okay. But it is incredibly the. It's it's not about how hard the overall material is. It's about how crazy the um, carbides are that are formed between the tungsten and cobalt. Mm. So because of those carbides in there, it's it'll hold an edge about three, maybe three to five times as long as any modern super steel. Cool. But but it, if you come across something really hard, like if you were to try to baton it through a piece of hardwood, yeah. the edge will roll. Okay. Right. Oh, well that's, that's so that's it, the world, right? Cutting, right? So for like, normal EDC tasks, this material's awesome. And guys like Kevin Foster and Tom Mayo and a lot of those guys think it's the best stuff ever, albeit very expensive material. Mm -hmm. um, great for EDC. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's... Um, but don't go batoning with it. But you want that toughness. You want it to roll instead of chip if something bad does happen. So it, it actually right. sounds like a, a good uh, contingency. Uh, uh, Spirited Whiskey, we're talking tonight about... Uh, some of our uh, crazy or most unusual uh, knives. Uh, do you have anything unusual? Unusual as in? I, I don't mean unusual like you know, unusual. not everyone has a Tom Mayo, but I mean like, like, like here's a weird one, you know, and this yeah. is the, the Ciccini designed uh, uh, ZT after his Airborne. And I, I have to say this is one of the one of the weirder designs I, I still have. Uh for a while, I was kind of trying to accumulate odd designs just to have them and then kind of started getting rid of them. But uh, uh, if it's got a leather fob on it, I guess it means I'm not going to get rid of it. Yeah. So, uh, well, the whole 6K Stellite thing is kind of weird, right? That is, that is way weird. That is way weird. And people don't use it. Like makers don't like to use it because your shop has to be set up to work with it because you, uh, can't, you can't drill it. Like, good luck drilling through it. It could take you an hour with a with a carbide, with tungsten carbide bits, you know? Oh, wow. So does he have it all um, um, kind of made off, off, uh, off premises or? No, he's just kind of the master of the stuff, okay. um, you know, and that's his, that's his MO. It's a material he tends to use. It's either that or CPM 154 or XHP, I think, are the three he uses. But in terms of other weird stuff, um, I also have some Winkler stuff. If you guys know the Winkler knives. Uh, mm -hmm. The fixed blade knives. Yeah. yeah. So, like, um, I have one of his Sayox. Lavender pants. Sayox tomahawk that he does. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. So, did he design those for the Sayox Kali guys? Is that, that Kali. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, it is, uh, 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 Dave, are you familiar with that axe uh, yeah. pattern? Yeah, that yeah. is. That is uh, Ron really makes a few of those too, Bob. The fight. Yeah. T he, traditional Filipino weapons. Yeah. yeah. That uh, that interesting axes you can check them out on his site. Love them, love them. Yeah. So you have a, a Winkler Sayok. I have a Winkler Sayok. I have a Winkler belt knife um, as well. Um, that is really really cool, although not bizarre. Very functional um, yeah. as a wood tool, but also you know as a, a you know it's a tactical fighting blade. Is really I mean more of what it is. Right, right. Uh, as far as other weird weirder bizarre items oh um lee williams kickstop mechanism is awesome oh, yes and, and that would fi i think 
fall into that weird kind of category. Yeah. Um, it's an ingenious idea, in my opinion. A lot of people think, whatever, it's just a flipper mechanism, but I think it's pretty darn awesome. Wait, uh, Dirk, uh, would you mind uh, showing off the uh, the um, the, oh. the the big oh, giant one? I can't remember the name of it now. The chisel. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> Phil Harvey peacemaker. Now that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's awesome and totally unusual. <laughs> what? And it's a little thick at three eighths. Oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> my arm's getting a little tired. Dude. It's a, my, just my arms. That's awesome, is what it is. It's also bizarre, but totally awesome and totally unusable. Uh, unusable for any practical purposes, except splitting logs. But it's still probably but, wicked sharp, right? Oh God, it's it's you better be careful closing it because it's yeah. such a heavy blade. Yeah, that'll lop off a finger. It it could it would take your finger off. If yeah, you get, it would literally just take your finger off. Dave, what, what sword did you just grab? I saw you turned around and grabbed a sword. You did saw you? that, I, I did. I'm always looking at you know what you. Oh, oh, oh that's oh. a. Oh. Is that a wait? Wait, don't tell me. Is that a pep? A novice. A novice, yeah. Oh, wow. God, that is gorgeous. Crazy. That's, yeah, that's wicked. It's that, uh, meant, meant to be a headline. Mm. headline. So is that, a, is that a full tang then? It's His body I divided. Oh. It's pieces I distributed across the land. Yeah, that's the kind of knife. Yeah. I love that. It's like something Legolas would carry from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is also a, 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 a crazy Filipino uh oh. Blade. I mean, I love their uh, like the angles that the handles take to the to, right. to the to the blade. No doubt, this was someone's everyday everything knife, but uh, yeah. Uh, also, no doubt, a a weapon um, from time to time. And to me, that's interesting. And the cool thing about this is this is a very un you know these are the kind of handles you see on Filipino weapons. You know, with the mm. big bird's beaks and the hooks and all that kind of. Uh, uh, ceremonial stuff on it, but this one looks like all of that broke off, and they just grabbed something like a table leg or something oh. and just jammed it on there and went back to work with it. So it has that same sort of, uh, you know, it's it's unusual and it's uh, well menacing and maybe has a little history to it. Show you another one real quick, Bob. Oh, that's cool. Oh, is that the one you sent me a picture of? Is that it? Looks like a that's chef's cool. knife almost. Yep. This is the this is its big brother. This is by Knock. Ooh, that's cool, man. It's like a I think the blade is so far under the 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 handle. Yep. You know, so you could you could really get that's some work done. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, that is cool. cool. Now the one in your right hand reminds me of uh, of Leong Ma's cuff. I think he calls it kitchen utility mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. Is 40. It's a cheap, it's about a $70 knife. It's not, you know, it's got the, uh, the uh, laminate carbon fiber with the G10 underneath. I like the big, okay. We're going to have to talk about that in a second. I like the big crazy pivot. Uh, Dave Everett, you have an Instagram 2.0 kind of. Dave, do you have an Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let Edwin know what it is so he can, so he can tune into you. Sure. Uh, just look for Dave Everett photography. Does anyone have a Jack 2.0 from Rick, um, from Riot? No, I don't. Yeah. That has the removable blade, right? It has a removable M390 blade on it that screws in from the top from and the spine, that yeah. the pivot on it uh, as well that you have to like, I don't know if you have to disassemble it in some capacity to get to the internals or they mean for you not to, but it's, it's a wild design too. Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like uh, if I had that knife, you know, chances are I, I wouldn't be using it in such a way that this would come up. But I feel like just looking at it, you can imagine where tidbits of stuff would get caught inside the blade. Um, but like you know, it? obviously it's not, again, it's a luxury good. You're not looking at that knife to think of like the cheese you'll be cutting with it or the wood you're going to be carving with it. It's... Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know something you might press into light duty at some point. Um, so when does this all become uh, like 
like materialistic? That's my question. Like I, yeah, I have, I, I am very studied and practiced with my justifications internally. Uh, but sometimes I wonder, man, am I just, have I just become a materialist? You know, I just can't wait to get that new knife. Yeah. Or, or, um, is it something deeper and more noble? Like I ordinarily convince myself of, and that's what allows me to do this. Uh, no, we're no all one. In. No one. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, I think it's all, it's all at some point it's yes. A bit materialistic, right? I mean, I'm not a special operator <laughs> I sell booze for a living. I mean, if that's a special operation, yeah, but, um, but no, I, you know, but I, I also love having a Sioc or a Winkler belt knife, or, you know, yeah. or, or something like that. But it doesn't mean I, I'm an I'm an I'm an operator, or I'm ready to use that, or go to war with it, or combat with it. I'm no. not a seal jumping out of, you know, I'm not a seal, so I don't need a covert, you know, that'll pass through a metal detector and go underwater at the same time, right? right. <laughs> like, you know, but at some point, it's also cool and fun, and um, it's neat to experience it. And think about why they were made. Yes. A passion is a passion, says a therapeutic edge. And I, and I, I think you're right about that. I think sometimes I tend to get a little uh, yeah, a, a little uh, too introspective about it. Like, uh, why am I thinking so much about this? Uh, but yeah, a passion is a passion. And it's not, uh, you know, I guess you're materialistic when you're when you're buying the knife so that other people see that you have the knife. Oh, did you see that Bob has the new BB shredder? Did you see that? You know, when you do that, then you're a materialist, right? Glowing and clout is a stupid reason to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no doubt about it. Um, if you enjoy it and you're passionate about it, there's all the reason in the world. Big yep. Boris says, Ryan, good bourbon is at the top of the list of any operator. Trust me on this. So I think you're right. You are a special operator. Amen. Big bore. We can hang with him at least. <laughs> Manny Z, everyone should have a Jack 2.0 to comb your hair. That's interesting. Uh, Don't they, do they make a, do they make a comb? There is a comb, ada a comb adapter. You uh, replace the blade. You blade yeah. and screw in a comb. Yep. It, it's like the, uh, the uh, Microtech comb out the front. Yep. Yeah. Which I always thought was cool until I saw the price. I'm like, okay, it's not that cool because it's not sharp. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyone else want to show an unusual knife before we go on to uh, debate uh, overbuilt versus gentlemanly knives? Gentlemanly knives. Uh, that is the debate. But are there any other unusual things uh, any of you would like to show? I guess. Let's see. What do you got, Dave? One more there. Anything from Elijah Isham? I don't have any Elijah Isham. He does a lot of unusual stuff. From a lot of years yeah, ago. He does. Oh. Isn't that oh. weird? That's a little weird. It's like they it's couldn't. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. Huh. Couldn't. That's a 511 by Fox. I like oh, the pommel. The funny, the funny thing is, you can't tell where the blade should come out by looking at it. Right. Yeah. Which side? You, you're not sure. Y yeah. yeah. It's kind of symmetrical. Yes. Right. But they, they did manage to make it out of uh, S30V. <clears throat> hey, uh, Dirk, I wanted to ask you, because you just did an unboxing. You've been doing a lot of unboxings uh, lately, which I think is really cool because uh, you're getting sent knives that are out of your uh, uh, usual wheelhouse. And Correct. it's really cool to see you talk about those knives and kind of apply the lens um, uh that you apply to to your more fancy knives, but scale it down. And and I I really appreciate those reviews. First of all, how has it been getting all of these uh, knives that you may not have been exposed to? And B, I brought this out because it's unusual. And okay. I just saw that you had maybe your first exposure to cold steel with the AD10. Yeah, I've had a couple of other cold steels before, kind of years and years ago. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of crazy. I. I reached out to a couple of guys on Facebook and just said, Hey, if anybody's got some stuff they'd like to loan in, you know, cause I only have owned so many. Yeah. And I was starting to get through that. And, you know, as the channel grows and everything, I'm like, you know, I don't want to run out of stuff. And, and I kind of was dumb and started doing a video a day thinking I had a ton of stuff. And then you realize pretty quick, <laughs> you start to think 
what am I going to talk about tomorrow? Um, and all of a sudden, I got more stuff here. I can almost hardly keep track of who's is what. I mean, they're all together and they're all safe and organized, guys. Don't <laughs> worry. <Just a note. laughs> but it's it's a little wow. It kind of came in as a floodgate, and then uh, which has been great because now I can see a lot of things that the best three hundred dollar <laughs> beard come out there. Sweet, I'll get one. <laughs> you just told me, Big Boar. Yeah, I'm on it. I know a dealer, so I I'm on it tomorrow. I'm a tourist with the beard. I'll have mine on in the winter, so maybe I'll maybe I'll spend the money. There you go. But, yeah, so it's really been great to <laughs> see a bunch of knives that I don't normally get to see. This is good. I, I, I'm sorry. I I was nope. distracted by they need a beard comb that removes gray hair, but uh, I, yeah, I think I we'd all we'd all be out of trouble like, except for spirit and whiskey. Just go with it. Just use a little writ. But uh, so so of the uh, a little writ dye. Yeah. Uh, just boil your face. Uh, so uh, of all of the new brands that you've been checking out, CRKT, uh, uh, Cold Steel, uh, some of the, uh, you know, um, more, more within more within the, reach, uh, brands, what, what are your favorites? Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily have a favorite yet. I'm really kind of impressed with some of the CRKTs that I've gotten just because they are so affordable. And for what you're getting, totally a totally great deal um so i've really enjoyed the crkt stuff um and seeing some of the new benchmates i mean been a benchmade fan for a lot of years um but to see a lot of their newer stuff has been great um my benchmade dealer friend reached out the other day and and said hey we got a, a whole box of new stuff that just came in all new 2020 stuff that we're going to be sending you so i got a bunch of zt and benchmade stuff coming in that i'm just like wow i don't even know what any of that is but i I'll take it. Figure it out. That is cool. It's 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 a uh, it's great to see a totally fresh perspective because uh, you know if you've been through cycle after cycle, year after year of ZT releases, like here's the next one. Uh, it's it's different. Uh, you're coming to it with fresher eyes. I like that. Yeah. So hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully people will stick around and watch and and give some feedback and you know constructive criticism is always welcome. If you're kind of an ass, then you get the boot. But hey, that's what it's all about. By criticism. What's that, Dirk, Dirk, Dirk has been providing amazing content. So if anybody mm -hmm. in, the, in the room isn't hip or anybody that's watching, uh, you need to go subscribe to him because you're doing awesome work. Great. Thank you. I greatly appreciate that. You know, it's I get more and more comfortable with every video. Like, you know, before you came on, I really started in middle of December. So it's been five and a half months um, and it's been a learning curve. You know, I've had some, you know, good friends with 30 something thousand subscribers that have really helped kind of mentor a little bit, but it's still a kind of just do it and, and fumble through and make today's better than yesterday's. Hey, thanks big boy. I appreciate that. Hey, that's uh, that's, that's great advice for life right there. Just be a little bit better than you were yesterday and well, you're probably on track. That's, That's all you can do in life, right? So, uh, Spirited Whiskey, you, you got a couple of tremendous compliments. Yeah, one, those are good ones. Yeah. And, Teddy Bear, and also, someone wants to know if your fantastic beard runs on bearings. Uh, you know, my, my, my beard does not run on bearings, but it does uh, occasionally get some decent, you know, decent oils. A little, uh -huh. bit, of, a little bit of KPL, and the, yeah. and the beard never, never hurts. Plus, nope. it's, it's, it's so... Conditioner. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It, it keeps it close by as Life well. Yeah. All right, gents. I think it's time uh, all your buddies on screen. Alex, man, we have a spot right in the middle for you. That's right. Come on in here, Alex. Join the Come party. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, actually, Alex, you want to pop in here for a knife fight? Maybe you and Dirk can uh, can talk about overbuilt versus gentlemanly knives. That's what it's going to be tonight. Not Barris Foster Brown's washers. Yes, of course. Because, uh, you know, you got to be able to get a little rough and tumble, right? You don't want it to jam up when a little sand gets in there. Mm -hmm. uh, overbuilt versus gentlemanly knives tonight. That's what it's going to be. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll wait a second, see if Alex is going to drop in. If not, uh, um, I... I, Dirk, you know you get to pick next time. All right. All right uh, so I, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. Um, I, I'm gonna do this uh, with Alec. I mean, no, with Dirk. And however, I'm gonna let you guys choose 
who gets to defend what? Is it overbuilt knives or gentlemanly, you know, gentlemen carry knives? That is the topic. One of us has to has to defend one of those things. So who should it be? You're the gentleman, Bob. I'm the gentleman's. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. So, all I, right. And all I've right. not really called a gentleman before. So, that would have <laughs> really been a stretch for me to play the side. I'm shocked. Well, yeah, it's a joy. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, I, I just want to say, uh, Spirited Whiskey, great to see you. Thanks for dropping in, sir. Thank you for Always, always a pleasure. And uh, I also want to thank you, Dave, for suggesting this awesome topic tonight. Most yeah, unusual yeah. knife designs. It was funny. He texted me, what's the thing tonight? I don't see it up. And I'm like, I have no idea. I'm blasted at work. And he said, how about oh, you? Like the show, so. you know, what's that? I saved the show. Oh, you thank did. you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Oh. Anyway, Dave, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Take care. I'll talk to you next time, sir. Take care. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks. Always. All righty, sir. Mr. Werning, so you're overbuilt and I'm gentlemanly. Uh, so I will let you start. That's that's actually my tactic. It it looks like I'm being polite, but actually, yeah, I, I I feel you there. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you got to be over, you got to go overbuilt because it's either go big or go home. And you know, if I can't cut something, I can beat it to death. And I know that. After I beat it, it's still going to work. It's still going to open. It's still going to close. I'm going to wipe it off and put it back in my pocket because you just can't beat the size. <laughs> size matters. All right, Derek. Well, you know, you can't have an overbuilt gentleman's knife, I think. But uh, that's not what we're talking about right here. What we're talking about is reality. We're talking about walking around every day. Now, I know lately we haven't been walking around as much, or maybe we've been walking around even more. Maybe we're finding ourselves at our neighborhood park more than, than usual. Maybe we're finding ourselves in situations where people are a little off, off kilter and a little bit nervous. You know, mm -hmm. They're seeing other humans and they're being like, ah, I remember you, but I don't know how I'm supposed to act. And so when you have a ah. gigantic overbuilt knife in your pocket, it might not be the thing. I mean, you know, we all live in a society here. So I'm just saying, perhaps we all understand that we all need knives because it's the first tool and it's the most essential tool. But but maybe in these trying times, maybe what we really need is a gentlemanly knife in our pocket so that everyone around us just, just feels comfortable. You know, I can see your point there. And, you know, given the times that we're in right now today, I kind of go with that but you know sometimes you just need a little shock and awe <laughs> yeah. and and you just you just clear the way yeah sometimes uh, you just you just gotta go shock and awe i appreciate that and i would imagine it sounded like i was pandering a little and 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 perhaps i was so uh dirk i i think perhaps uh, i agree with you more than i agree with myself in this case uh because <laughs> Look, I, I think maybe that, that's not your gentlemanly folder. Well, it is slim. It, it is, is slim. slim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never have to second guess the let me whip this out with the gents folder. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. And actually, everything you said was innuendo. I, I'm not sure if you're doing that on purpose, but Timothy Becker, BS. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I can do that sometimes. The gentleman's knife is often far too small to be comfortable in my hand. Yes, and in the pocket. Yeah. I don't like a tiny knife clipped to my pocket, and I don't like yeah. it rattling around at the bottom and, and going horizontal on me. You know, oh, yeah, and I definitely agree with that. It does feel awkward in the hand. Um, I did just get in some stuff that's on the small side, um, and I'm thank God I never bought one because it's just too tiny. But, you know... It's it's uh, it needs to be shown and reviewed and give people my opinion. So, yeah. Well, um, well, I, I I want you to tell me what that knife is. But first, lavender pants. You're not far off, actually. But it usually starts with, ladies and gentlemen of the academy. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's taken you a long time, but I appreciate this honor. <laughs> The knife. Oh, 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 Alex. Alex. Yeah, Alex. Yes. Okay. 
See, you should have been in on this, or, or at least you should have sent me that before I was done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that was good. Yeah, uh, I, I I find that uh, all knives, great and small, and I love the design of a lot of small knives, uh, but they just bum me out, you know, with the size and stuff. The front flipper is like a fidget toy. Huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, fidget toy that stabs you in the palm of the hand. Uh, this will be my last unusual night uh, knife for the night. It's uh, we all know this. This is the Best Tech malware by our good friend uh, Terrell and his brother Seth Todd. You know him as Zelric Forty Two. Uh, they designed just some cool futuristic looking stuff. To me, this is the space age Viking gentleman's knife. You know, it looks like a sax, yep. but it also has all these crazy futuristic lines and and style cues. I love this knife. This is a this is a great knife, and. Uh, uh, a tip I have not, well, I'm not even going to mention the tip. I'm just going to pretend I didn't even mention the tip. Yeah, yeah, Maybe like nothing will happen. <laughs> and I got one more unusual one, too, that people may not have seen much of. It's the Praetorian neck knife. Oh, weird. Look so at that. It's, it's a scaled down, you know, Medford Praetorian in a uh, neck knife format. It's very, you know, it's small. Yeah. But what is that two and a half? Is that like a two and a half inch blade, would you say? Yeah, about that, maybe a little less. Uh, yeah, right up just under two and a half. So, Dirk, are you gonna do a uh, neck knife? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's well, for building it comes, a it comes. Oh, that's sweet. That I, I, I do like it. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about the hole in the blade just aesthetically because you know. It's different for sure. It's 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 a Medford. But it but it makes it. It's I mean, different. it makes it doable. Otherwise, it'd be a giant slap. Uh, what I wanted to ask you uh, before we wrap is: Are you going to do a video on that dyerware? And a a and b, will you show it off again? I never seen it, that. Before. The the dyerware video is already up, so you it have to watch all of my the... videos, of course. Now 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 you just gave it away. Um, but yeah, there is a video of this up because this one I've actually owned for a while. And so it was one of the earlier videos. Yeah, I have not seen it. And I was recently looking at Dyer. I'm, I was been trying to get in touch with the with Mr. Dyerware. I'm not even sure of his name. Um, uh, it escapes me right now. It's not Dyerware, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. Blank, but yeah, uh, I would love to talk to him. I I I I think those knives are just so gorgeous, and they are like really in my in my like this kind of. Like mm -hmm. they're the ultimate, like this kind of, well, it is or SMF to very Praetorian sized, you know? Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. I, mm, mm, mm. so that's a need want need slash want. Yeah. So who knows? maybe I sell half my collection and buy a dyerware. Look at that. The yeah. sound I played. What's that sound? That is gorgeous. Wait, can I see the frag uh, on the other side? Yeah, there you go. That is so cool. If it'll focus, there you go. You know, I think that Medford produces some very masculine knives, and by masculine, I mean like that knife. Look at that. It's like looks like a grenade. It's mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, maybe that's just an it's like a, an extremely obvious statement, but I, but. That is one of the things I like about those, how muscular is more the, the term yeah. I meant. Muscular more than masculine. But yeah, I guess they're probably pretty masculine too. But uh, man, love that knife. And thank you for showing off that dire wear. That's a Solo. Yep, the Solo V5, this one. V5. The V4 is, there's not, there's just some small nuances between the versions. Okay. Well, I want to make sure I'm getting the right one when I'm ordering. <laughs> you definitely want the Solo. And I think, I think the most current one is maybe the V6. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure because I got this one on the secondary market from a good buddy. Um, so it's a little bit older. So there may be a version six out now. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Well, right on. Direware is in my future. Probably not my near future at all because, uh, well, I, I know they're not easy to come by. It's only money. It's only money. That's right. <laughs> it's only money, man. And it just grows on trees. First, it has to go through this long process, but it grows yeah, on trees. It, well, you know, at some point, it does come from the trees. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. 
All right, Dirk. Well, I think I'm going to uh, about to wrap it up. I want to know while we're here talking, is there anything else you want to say to the wider world who might be listening at the moment? Go check out my channel and you can see details on all of these ones I showed. And uh, there's a lot more coming up and uh, stay tuned. And, and if I may also plug your channel, uh, a really great variety from, from the, from the esoteric crazy stuff mm -hmm. to, to the everyday. And, uh, that's something I really appreciate because, um, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm really just interested in seeing something that I can get today. And other times I want to get your take and, on something. Yeah. Like and there's a mix. And I think Alex kind of in one of his videos or something, he had described me as kind of a mix between Nick Shabazz and Jim Skelton. So I don't, <laughs> yeah. Only because they do some of the, you know, your normal Benchmade Spartacos and your crazy Phil Harvey's and Todd Beggs and, you know, custom stuff. So it's kind yeah. of, the full realm, a lot of them are customs that you guys can't get uh, on the secondary market. Um, and a lot of them are, hey, the brand new 2020 um, ZTs that I'm gonna be having. So it's it's kind of a range, guys. Well, uh, Women Carry Knives is gonna be getting a second job Perfect. so they can keep up with your collection. Uh, tier one says, you the man, Dirk. Derek, yeah. it's been a pleasure having you on, man. I, I really like your channel. Need to go sub to his channel. Yes, you do. It, uh, it it's, yes. it's awesome. And uh, not for nothing, uh, but I think your uh, your assessment of these knives uh, sounds pretty smart, too. It's not just, uh, you know, sometimes I find myself just catching myself saying this is really cool and I like it because it's cool. But I like your take on things. I think it comes from an informed spot. So Great. good morning. Thank you so much for coming on Thursday Night Knives. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Well, that does it for this edition of Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank Dirk for joining me. And uh, also for all you guys and gals uh, for commenting and talking and being a part of this. It really makes it fun. And, and that's the reason why we want to do this, right? And we get to meet people and talk to people called Lavender Pants. I love that. Love it. It's great. <laughs> Well, if you haven't let, please uh, comment, subscribe, and share this uh, video and uh, with your friends, neighbors, and people who need to know more about knives. Uh, we'll really appreciate it. And so for Dirk and Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer.